Hello and welcome to a time of praise and sharing the word. I know we're all going to be blessed because the word is spirit and is life. Don't forget that if you're blessed, you must share, subscribe, and like. As you're blessed, bless someone else by sharing, subscribing, and liking. Okay, so before we start with a couple of praise and just sharing the word, I just want to just uh, say a word of prayer. Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This is the day you've made. We're rejoicing in you. We are glad in you. We thank you, Father God, that today your will be done and your kingdom come. Reign supreme. Spirit of the living God, we just invite you at this time just to minister as you choose. To minister because you know the hearts of men. Meet everyone at the point of their need, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. But you, but you, there is nothing on earth I desire besides you. My heart and my strength, many times they fail, but there is one truth that all Oh, God. 
the strength of my heart. Thank you. And you're the peace that passes to an understanding. Hallelujah. You are the peace that guards my heart. My help in time of need. You are the hope that leads me on and brings me to my knees. For there I find you waiting, and there I find release. So with all my heart, I worship. shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, Say, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready Went in, went in to meet, went in to the wedding, and the door was shut. They went in with him, and the door was shut. It's interesting because, you know, I've, I've looked at this so many times, and I wonder, okay, Lord, 
it's, it's, this is a bride and a bride, the bride, the groom. We know that the oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. We know that. And we know that the Holy Spirit come, the Holy Spirit dwell in us. We know that when we first fall in love with Jesus, it's all exciting. You can't wait to tell everybody. You're all excited. You want everyone to know, gosh, I've, 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 you know, I'm in love with Jesus. He's so great. He's so wonderful. And there's a relationship started. What I just want to just mention here is that also the church is the bride of Christ. The church is the bride of Christ. He's the bridegroom. That's not, this is talking about the church. It's talking about the church. And so the oil represented the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is with us. The Holy Spirit is God with us. And you know, we have this relationship. The Holy Spirit is teaching us. The Holy Spirit is leading us. He's guiding us. And sometimes we get so complacent in our relationship. We don't even bother. We don't even bother to talk to the Holy Spirit. We don't do nothing. And so eventually we get dry. There's no oil. You know, there's the, 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 you just can't be bothered anymore. And you just leave the Holy Spirit. And this is what happened in a lot of even uh, natural weddings, you know, natural marriages. Sorry. You get married and you're just so excited. And then all they say the honeymoon period is worn out or worn off or whatever. And then people just don't want to try anymore. They don't want to communicate with each other. It's just, you know, okay, yes, we're married. We're, we're okay now. We're husband and wife. And, and we don't bother. And, and this is the same thing that the, 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 this is talking about. The church, when we first come to no, a knowledge of Jesus Christ, we're all excited. We're all happy. And then, you know, sometimes the, the, the trials come. The things that happen that, you know, that so easily beset people. The money worry, the children worry, the church, things in the church you don't like, brethren you don't like, brethren don't, don't like you, husband and wife who, you know, they, they come into adultery, all sorts of things happen where people say, you know something, I can't be bothered. The money problems, not so much money problems. So sometimes people, be, be, they just start to get kind of warm or lukewarm or cold and they just can't be bothered anymore. They know that they're, that they're married, they know that they're saved, but they cannot be bothered with anything else. So the oil just dries up. Uh, there's no relationship. And they just think to themselves, oh well, you know, I'm born again. Even if I don't praise God, even if I don't talk to God, even if, if I don't maintain the relationship, I'm still going to make it to heaven. You know, but looking at this, this, this seems to be telling me something else. You know, and in verse 11 it says that afterward the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Well, they must have known him at some point because they're referring to him as Lord. Hallelujah. They must have known him, but the relationship, something happened to the relationship and they just could not be bothered. He was coming. He is coming. But there are many who just cannot be bothered. They think, you know, it's so, okay, I'm born again and that's it. Once you're born again, you're making it. Look at the scripture, people. It says, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. And so you see, we should never just sit down and think, okay, we're born again. And so because we're born again, we're going to make it. God is looking for a relationship. God is looking for consistency. He's looking for that love, that love relationship. Not, you know, you love me today, and if something don't go your way, go your, your way or the way you're expecting, you can't be bothered, you shut me off because, you know, you're not happy about something. That's not love. You remember that generally, love, love is kind, love is patient. Long, uh, you know, love is long-suffering. Hallelujah. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 13. You know, love is patient, love is kind. And, you know, love is not boastful, it's not envious, it's always wanting the best for others, not just for yourself. But when you're in love, you try to do so many things to make your, 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 your partner, your spouse happy. And if you make a mistake, you just say sorry and you keep moving. You know, so when you get into a place with God where, you know, your people might be upset with God for whatever reason, even for this pandemic, people might be blaming God. You know, people, why, why, God, why did you let this happen? Who said it's got anything to do with God? In everything, God still loves you. He still loves us. You know, we're still the bride of Christ. But we do not want to get outside of that, that love affair. We don't want to get outside of that, that lovely relationship with God. Um, you know, uh, and, 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 and of course, our, our oil to just dry up because we're not, we're not communicating. We're not worshipping. 
we're not singing so to God, we're not, you know, and as you know, as you're singing and you worship God, he, he speaks back to you. He communicates back to you. This relationship with God is a relationship. You understand. And so as much as you're giving to God and God is giving to you, that must be a continual thing. Hallelujah. In Ephesians 5, 23, 22 to 23, it says, wives, be subject to your own husbands as to the Lord. Be subject to your husband as to the Lord. That's the same that goes for the church. Church, bride of Christ, be subject to God. Not to man, to woman, but be subject to God. It says, for the husband is the head of the wife. As Christ is the head of the church. He himself being the savior of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wives ought to be to their husbands in everything. Hallelujah. So this is a real, uh, uh, it's a real, uh, it's a real love affair. Uh, how I see it is really uh, a person who is in love. And generally you're not going to marry someone unless you love them. You know, uh, Christ gave his life for us and we, we the church, we are that bride. We must stay in love with Christ because you can see from, that, from the scripture about the foolish and the wise, the wise stay, stay in love. The wise do everything to please God. It's as simple as that. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11, it says, this is quite interesting, it says, for I am jealous Jealous for you with godly jealousy. For I have betrothed you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness so your minds may be corrupted mm from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. Do you see? Subtly, things are done subtly. The name of Jesus is called just subtly. People just believe anything because someone say the name Jesus. They just believe everything. You know, uh, 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 in the natural, if you're going to, for example, if you're going to try and poison a rat, so to speak, you're not going to put the poison just just like that. You're going to probably put some cheese or put something on it to get the rat to come, the temporary rat to come to it, and then he's done. The rat is done. You know, and that's all the, 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 the enemy, the way the enemy does things, it's not just blatant. It's subtly, subtly. You know, it says here, God is jealous for us. He says, for I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. For I have betrothed you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. We should be sold out to God and no one else. We cannot be double-minded when it comes to our belief in God and our love for God. We must put God first. But I fear that somehow as the serpent deceived Eve, do you see, as the serpent deceived Eve, this is talking about the body of Christ, the bride of Christ. As the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, some people are so clever they know how to get you, they know how to coerce you, they know how to talk nonsense to you, and if you're not strong and in Christ, it's very easy to fall to it. It's very easy to fall to it. It says, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, my gosh, that's, I mean, it's amazing what's happening now. If you just look out and say, another Jesus. For he, if he comes, preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached. Again, they're saying, there are more than one Jesus. Which Jesus are you serving? 
or if you receive a different spirit, the many spirits, are you serving, are you flowing, are you being led by the Holy Spirit of God? You see, for if he comes preaches another Jesus whom you have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. It's so easy if someone comes to say to you, well, this is what I believe, and this is what I think, and this is my interpretation of that, and this is what I feel, and you say, okay, uh, you are my friend, you are my mother, you are my sister, you are my brother, you are my child. I believe you, so I'm going to go with you. Does that mean that because that's what they say, that's the gospel? That's the truth? We cannot afford to come this far and allow anybody to take us off track. People, beware. We've already been warned that in the last day, many people will fall away, fall away from God, giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils. Philippians 2, therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. These are the things that you have to ask God to help you to discern, to understand. When people are doing things through what? Selfish ambition or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for your own interests, but also for the interests of others. My, 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 my. Let, his, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. You don't need to lift up yourself because God will lift up the humble and you'll make the proud base of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and be found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father. Isn't that something? So you see, if you bear these things in mind, if you bear these things in mind and you continue to, you know, to um, evaluate your own self, evaluate your behavior, evaluate your heart, have I got oil? Am I drying up? Am I a foolish bride? Am I a, a wise virgin or a, fool vir a foolish virgin? You assess yourself. You assess your own heart. Don't be foolish. Don't be foolish because the foolish will be left behind. That's what the Bible is saying. And so you have to look at the Bible holistically and see, am I in any of the, uh, do I fit into any of this category of a foolish person? Am I going to allow someone to, you know, to take me off track? Am I going to allow someone to, you know, take away this love of God that I have and, and, and you know, put God in second place? God, you said this, but my friends said this, or my mother said this, or my sister said this, so I'm going to do what they said. Forget what you said because I know, I know that I'm already born again and I know that I'm going to make it anyway. That's not what the Bible is saying. Therefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. 
work out your own salvation. Assess yourself. If you're on the right path with God and you're walking, keep on walking. Keep on loving God. Keep on loving others. Keep on doing good to others. Don't do anything that is contrary to God. Don't do things on purpose that's displeasing to God. Keep on keeping on in the Lord. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. My God, you see what God is saying? Do all things. You see, this, this is really important because these are the things that can take you off track. If you, if you, you know, you, you walk in these, in these behavior, in these attitudes, do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless. Isn't that something? You may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Make your light shine. You should shine. People should see that there's a difference in you. They should think that when you come in the scene, everything change. Because you have the light of God. You have the love of God. You have the peace of God. My God, you have the patience and the tolerance you know, of God. You have the fruit of the Spirit. So this is what you should, you should be doing. You know, this is what you should be doing. Just hold me one minute, one minute. Yes, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his own good pleasure. Do all things without complaining. Are you a complaining person? Do you complain for everything? And disputing, I'm disputing this. There's constantly making problems. That he said, do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless. When you're not doing these things, God sees that you're blameless. There's nothing, there's nothing anyone can blame you for. And also harmless, my God, children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. You know, there's a song called this little light or this bright light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And that's what you should be doing. That's what you should focus on. Lord, let me be a blessing to others. Lord, wherever I go, use me to bless others. If you're going around and you're, you're cursing or you're abusing or you're complaining or you're disputing, God said, you're not blameless and you're not harmless because you're doing damage. And these are the things that it says, your oil, you haven't got time to be spending time with God because you're busy doing other things. God is jealous of your love. He wants your love first for him. And if you love God first and you're pleasing to God, everything else falls into place. It really does. Holding fast the word of life, the word of life, the scriptures, the Bible, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Wow. Wow. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Praise you, Jesus. In 1 Corinthians 7, verse 16, it says here, For how do you know, O wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, O husband, whether you will save your wife? Do you know that many people lose their salvation because of a spouse? Many people lose their salvation because of a spouse, because if a spouse feels that they don't want to go here, or they don't want to go there, or they don't want to pray, or they don't want you to pray, or they don't want you to read the word, or they don't want you to praise God, and then you say, okay, you know, okay, I love my husband, or I love my wife more than God, I put my, wife, my husband and my wife first, so for peace, for peace, I'm going to do what the husband or the wife or the mother or whoever does, 
It says here, we're talking here about how do you know, O oh wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, O oh husband, whether you will save your wife? This is very, very important because people think that by doing, when it comes to the things of God, by putting a wife or husband first, that they're going to be pleasing. Uh-uh. God comes first. He says, you don't know you're going to save your wife. Why if you don't know you're going to save your husband? It says in Matthew 10, 37, He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Wow. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Can you see? God ain't plain. It's so clear. You must put God first, you must love him first, but when you love him first and you love others, oh, but you haven't got time to be arguing, you haven't got time to be complaining about everything, you're trying to just keep peace, you're just trying to bring peace, love, unity, harmony, and it just make your life so much stress-free, huh? But you see, there's no excuse to put anyone else before God and he will not accept it, he will not. Uh, Mark chapter four, it says here in 20 verse 21 he said to them do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed do you do you bring it up and hide it instead don't you put it on a stand mm -hmm. for whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open if anyone has ears to hear let them hear. Whatever you do in secret and think that God ain't seeing it, whatever you're doing and you think, oh well, you know, it's not, God doesn't see anything and, and God is okay because I'm born again and I'm saved and that's it. Uh-uh. God will bring it out. It says whatever you think you're doing in secret, it will be exposed. So why doing anything that's against God? We're talking about keeping our oil. We're talking about having the oil. Not running out of oil, not drying up, not being that foolish virgin. No, 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 no. I'm going to keep walking with God. Because when I keep walking with God, He keeps filling me again. He keeps filling me. He keeps filling me. When I'm in love with God, I'm communicating with God. And if you love God, you will love others. God is the Prince of Peace. He's the King of Glory. He's the lover of your soul. He's the lifter of your head. So if you're walking in love with God, loving God, believe me people, it's easier to love others. To love others. So remember this one, one thing. You bring your lamp and you shine. You don't hide your lamp, you let it, just be open. Don't hide your light. Don't hide your light. And remember that whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought up into the open. If anyone has ears to hear, let them hear. 2 Corinthians 4 Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Do you hear? People can actually handle or use the word of God in a deceptive way and try to be super clever, try to be clever and thinking that, you know, some people are so stupid, they haven't got a clue what they're on about. God sees. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame. Those things are shameful. Not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded. And you know who the God of the world is. The God of this age has blinded. You know that Satan, the devil. The God whose minds, the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe. 
lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God should shine on them. The mind can be blinded hmm? Hmm. by the God of this age working through his agents and people think so all the time that because somebody called the name of Jesus it means that they are a Christian but remember there are different Jesuses there's different doctrines there's different gospels so you must know Christ for yourself and stay in love with him allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and to lead you keep the oil fresh and keep the fire burning it says here lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God should shine on them it says here for we do not preach ourselves but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your bond servants for Jesus sake for it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness who are shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ I just want to share these other verses with you. Matthew 15, 8. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. These are also people you'd call the foolish virgins. If people are saying uh, 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 to everybody, oh, I'm a Christian, and oh, I'm this, and oh, I'm that, you know, self-praising, and I go to church seven days a week, and I read the Bible 24 hours a day, and see, and your heart is far from God. It says, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. That should never be mentioned among any of us. Our walk of faith is sure we love the Lord, and it's not just with mouthpiece, but it's with our heart from our hearts. Revelation 2 verse says, but I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Again, if the way we love Christ in the first place, if we've moved away from that, if we've fallen in love with other things, and you know, other things can be also spending most or nearly all of our time in front of the television or with our, uh, a, a handset or telephone or tablet or iPad because there's so much to keep you, uh, 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 keep you totally, I don't even want to use the word addicted, but if we're being real, that takes up so much time. And I say that I myself, for all sorts of reasons, sometimes I have to use my iPad. But you know something, the iPad or the, the gadget shouldn't have you. You should have the gadget. That means when you choose to switch it off and put it down, it's not you're screaming at you saying, oh, take me, take me, don't leave me, don't leave me. And you put it down, mm, I've got to pick it up. And you're constantly being fed all sorts of things by all sorts of people, and you believe, oh, because someone says it, it's true. Confusion, you know, deception. People are deceitful. And Matthew 22, 37, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, everything that you have love the Lord and this is Jesus who said that love the Lord your God with all your heart Jesus will not settle for second place God doesn't he will not settle for second place and so these are the things if you move away from these things loving God being pleasing to God helping others loving others doing the things that God himself would do caring for people the way that God cared for people helping the sick helping the weak helping the widows helping people the way Jesus would help these are the things you do you know you help others as they have a need that you can help reaching out and helping them that's what God will do it says love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and you know if you've ever been in love that when you're in love with somebody you want to do everything to make them happy you want to do everything to make them you know just to make them happy and jolly and that's how God says that the first time we fell in love with the Lord that's how we were and then things and all sorts of things that happen and situations and you know trials and the whole lot people just go oh, I can't be bothered I think I'll, 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 nah, I can't be bothered now 
No. And we just put God aside and then we think, oh, when God come, I'll be the first in the queue. Look at that scripture again about the foolish virgins. Romans 6, 16. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey you, you are that one slave whom you obey. Listen to me. Anybody whose word you take and use that word rather than the truth of God or rather than obey, you become the slave of that person. And whether you know it or not, that person becomes your God. The person who you obey, that person becomes your God. That comes, you know, because we're slaves unto Christ, so to speak. Because we're doing his bidding. We say, this is what the Lord said we're doing. So if you decide to move away from the truth of the gospel, move away from what God says he hates, and still do what God says he hates, because you know, you think, well, this person says I should do that, or because I'm listening to this person, or because I'm listening to that teacher, or because whoever who is taking you away from the truth of the gospel, and from being that person that God wants you to be, God has called you to be, he says here, do you not know that to whom, that means whoever, to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey. Who are you obeying when it's not God? Who are you following when it's not God? He says that whoever you follow because you become weak because you think, oh, it's my husband, it's my wife, it's my friend, it's my sister, it's my brother, it's my child. Although they're doing something that is contrary to God. They're doing something that God is, that is not pleasing to God. Because you want to be in friendship or you want to be pleasing to them, you're going to put the truth of Jesus Christ somewhere else. And you think that because you're born again, you can just do that. God doesn't see that. And God is, you know, everything is going to be okay. Uh, 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 uh. He says, you do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey. Whether of sin leading to death, or of obedience leading to righteousness. You choose. Are you going to obey God leading to righteousness or are you going to obey someone else and, be, and become a slave to that person? You know, some people, they're so dependent and people acknowledging them and people saying, yes, I'm pleased with you. That if that person should ever turn and say, oh, you've done something wrong or you're not going to make it, they're done. Because they're so dependent on what people say. So, but you are, you're such a right person, you're such a Christian, and you're so this, and, and you give me everything I want, and you're so nice to me, you're always helping me. And so that person has them. That person can say, well, I don't think. And they say, oh, well, what did you say? I don't think, so I don't think. And they just run along. Forget about the word. Forget about what the word says. And God says, no, that whom you present yourself slaves to obey. Anybody who you obey contrary to God, that is the person who is your God. That is the person who is your God. You are that one slaves whom you obey. You need to know the word. Whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. And I think I've, I've shared some scripture there that we just need to just, just to meditate and to look at look at ourselves. I, I, I tell you, I always, I always. I'm looking at myself and assessing and evaluate my, my action and my behavior. So, Father God, I just want to be pleasing to you. What if I'm doing something that is wrong that's against you? Father God, I, just, I can't even, the thought is too much. You know, I can really, really understand when David said, Lord, whatever you do, don't ever take your spirit away. Don't ever take your anointing away from me. I truly can understand that. Because when you come to understand the love of God and the anointing of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, nothing can touch that. And you don't want to miss out on that. So you start to have that wonderful relationship before the bridegroom uh, bridegroom come. You understand, you're having that relationship. You're talking to God, you're loving God. You can, you know the presence of God. You know, you know the voice of God. He says, my sheep know my voice. And the voice of a stranger, they will not follow. When you follow the, 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 the voice of a stranger, whoever, in whatever shape or form, they come to deceive you. Know that whoever you follow other than Christ, they become your God. It doesn't make no difference who it is. It doesn't make no difference. Whoever word you take above Christ, that's your God. And when you are deceptive and you're deceitful, God, you, you heard what it says. It's shameful. 
do what God says if you love God. Do you love me? He that doeth the will of my father, that's my brother and my sister. But God is talking about his bride here. Bride and husband and groom is an intimacy, it's a relationship that nobody should come between. Even if you move away for a little while, you go back. You're back in tune, you know, with the bridegroom. You're no foolish virgin. We're no foolish virgin. Uh-uh. We're the wise. So we must continually assess ourselves, evaluate our behavior, our attitudes, our mind. Look at what we're doing. Are we putting anything before God? Even though we know in our heart, because you see, we have the oil, we have the Holy Spirit, we have the, the Holy Spirit on the inside to prompt us to do right, to prompt us to do the will of God. That if we're stepping off, the Holy Spirit is here to direct us. But some people, they'll choose, they'll fight, and they say, no, no, I choose this way. Remember the Bible says that the way to destruction is very, very, very fast. Many will find it. But the way to life eternal is very narrow. Only few will find it. We have to be the wise virgins. In Jesus' name. Amen. I trust that you were blessed. This has blessed me. You know, the word, every time you read the word, there's something to bless you. There's something more you're learning, you know? And so let's stay, stay close to God. Let's love him and let's just do everything we can to be pleasing. Because the blessing that comes with that, oh, it's, I mean, it's, you cannot put a value on that. And when God, when you're pleasing to God, you'll be so much more happy with yourself. God bless you. I love you. God loves you more. Love each other. Hallelujah. God bless you. Uh, 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 uh. See you soon. Love you. Bye for now.